Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to 3 My name is Jack and this is the Kangaroon 3D Printer Review. So happy right into this video. First off, I want to give a big thanks to Kangaroon for sending this printer out to me for a review. So this 3D printer is different than most because it's pretty small, it's portable, it's extremely low cost, and its aim is to be user friendly. I'll get to that in a little bit. So the company Kangaroon has made a 3D printer before this. This is actually their second 3D printer. So they do have some experience making 3D printers. Overall, I do think that this is a well-built machine, but there are some corners that they cut probably to make it more low cost, but I'll get to that a little bit later. So the printer arrived in a well-packaged box with a few parts to put together, the base itself, and then you screw that into the Z and Y axis, and that's pretty much the printer itself. But I did have some other loose parts in the box that came loose from shipping, so I had to put those back on the printer when it came. So it's really easy to assemble. And once it is fully assembled, just a quick calibration is needed, and theoretically, it's ready to print. I, I said theoretically, because that's what you usually do with 3D printers, and that's what I thought would happen, but apparently I was wrong. And, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But first of all, I have to talk about the specs of this little printer. Now quickly, this printer has some pretty decent specs for such a small price and small size. The bed size is 180 by 180 by 180 millimeters, and the bed is heated with a removable magnetic flexible build plate, which is awesome. The nozzle is 0.4 millimeters. It takes 1.75 millimeter filament. It has a power failure recovery mode, which is great. It also has a filament runout sensor. The whole printer runs on 24 volts. It has a full color LCD touch screen. It uses a micro SD card to print with, and it has some large knobs for the bed leveling. On the surface, this seems like a pretty decent little machine. The King Green printer also comes with a filament spool holder, but a pretty bad one at that. It has four bearings that are supposed to hold the filament spool, but some spools, like the filamentum spool I'm using now, is too small to fit on those four bearings. So I had to use my Ender 3 spool holder to hold the spool to print with. So the holder actually opens up, it slides in and out to adjust to different spool widths, but it only gets wider and not smaller, so it can't fit my filamentum spool. Also, the rubber feet on the spool holder are a little weird. Two of them were sticking out of the side, so I couldn't really use the filament spool holder that came with it. Also noticed that the 24 volt power plug does not fit very well into the printer socket. So I know that the metal part sticking out is ground, but still the plug should fit in and not stick out this much. Also, I'm not quite sure if it was just my unit or if it was damaged in shipping, but the X axis limit switch seemed to be a little bit bent and the X carriage was not hitting the switch very reliably. So if I push it against the switch, like half the times it would hit and half the times it wouldn't. So when a print was starting or the printer wanted to home, the X carriage would jam into the limit switch. So while I was examining the printer, the pathway between the filament runout sensor and the extruder gear was blocked by the Z axis lead screw. So the filament was literally rubbing against the lead screw as it was being pulled in to be printed out, which is not the ideal thing to have when feeding your filament into the printer. So the filament was coming out of the filament sensor and literally bending around the lead screw into the extruder gears. So that's definitely not the best thing to have. Another problem I found was that the Bowden tube was super short. So this tube I thought looked way too short and had a really sharp bend that came out of the extruder gear and went into the hot end. So I thought that bend was way too small and it caused a lot of friction with the filament. So I just pulled that Bowden tube out and replaced it with some genuine Capricorn tubing. And I thought that would fix it. But after a few tests, I realized that the tubing worked pretty much okay. So I just replaced it again. But it does look a little bit deceiving with such a sharp bend in the tubing. So the print bed has these awesome big adjustment knobs, kind of like the new Ender 3. And it has a removable magnetic flexible bed that is amazing. This is probably my favorite feature of the printer. 
and probably actually my favorite print bed I have tested so far. It's so nice to be able to just pull the bed right off, flex it, your print pops off, and then you just slap the bed back on and it magnetically sticks to the right spot. It's just super easy. The touchscreen is also very responsive and the menus are really deep with lots of features and controls. The one thing I think the engineers overlooked is the placement of the LCD. So when the printer is printing, it is really, really hard to touch the screen. So the bed actually moves over the touch screen. So if you want to adjust the settings or stop the print, you have to like stick your finger under the bed as it's printing to touch the screen, which is not really the ideal spot to put an LCD screen. So then I decided to print a Benchy just to see if everything was working okay. I used my normal cure settings that have worked fine for every other printer I've tested. So I started the print and the Benchy came out really, really under extruded. It was like sort of like a mesh finish with consistent holes throughout the whole model. So then I tried to print another model just to see if this was a one-time thing and it was not. So I looked at the extruder gear and realized that it was actually turning really, really slow. It was barely turning. So I stopped that print and tried to fix the problem. So first I went into Cura and doubled the extrusion multiplier and speed to just to see if it would hopefully turn the extruder gear faster and push out more filament to hopefully fix the under extrusion. But when I went and started to print that model, another Benchy, it was still under extruded a little bit and then halfway through the nozzle clogged and the printer stopped. So I stopped that print and had to unclog the nozzle so I can keep printing. So I guess the settings I changed in Cura broke the printer. So I had to figure out something else to do. I then looked in the SD card and found a folder called software. So I found actually a slicer that they put on the SD card. So I installed that slicer just to see if it would work and fix my problems. So when I opened the software, I realized that it was just a rebranded version of Cura. So it wasn't too hopeful, but I sliced up a new Benchy and started printing that G code. At first it looked like the same thing, but what do you know, it came out pretty well and way better than the other Benchies I printed before. So I guess it was something in their software that made the printer work. So I guess the normal settings and G code that I use on every other printer I've tested works fine except for on this printer. So it needs some other special settings that are in this uh, slicer. It's kind of weird. So just as I thought my problems were all over, I tried to print a small dragon and it stopped only a few layers in and the screen said it was 100% done, which it was definitely not. It stopped only a few layers in. So at first I thought maybe the power went out for a second or so and it stopped the print or maybe it was some glitch with the printer so I tried to print that model again. And this time I watched the screen as the percentage climbed rapidly to 100% and stopped at the exact same spot again. So I went onto my computer, plugged in the SD card and looked at the G code of the file to see if anything was wrong. And of course, when I opened up the file, it said that there was only 30 layers in the print and the G code just stopped after only a few lines. The whole rest of the file was all just spaces so the printer did not know what to do. So then I tried to slice another model of this bendy shark and made sure to check the G code and make sure that it was complete. And for some reason this time it was. So I plugged in the SD card and began to print the shark. So the shark turned out pretty well. The, the layers were actually extruded properly, which is good. The layer lines were not very even. You can definitely see each layer line. The top was a little bit under extruded, but it isn't too bad. And the bottom layer looks really good. And the model actually broke apart like it should. And the shark bent back and forth. So I would say this is a pretty successful model with the settings that Kingroon gave on their slicer. So next I printed a dog model and this turned out pretty well. Again, the outer shells of the dog are definitely noticeable. And also under the chin of the dog, there are some layers that have drooped down there, but overall it does look like a dog. It's not the best print I've ever seen, but it definitely did print successfully. The top is a little bit under extruded again. The bottom does look like it extruded pretty well. Another decent print, not the best, but it did print successfully. 
Finally, I printed a twisted vase. I also switched out the filament to another filamentum PLA. And this turned out pretty well. From a distance, it looks perfect. But as you get close, you can see little globs of filament around the whole vase. So again, it does look pretty good. But some of the lines of the vase, those sharp lines, doesn't look too good. But it does look like a twisted vase. So I have to accept that. Also noticed that there were some pre-sliced G-code files on the SD card. And I just went and printed those just to see what it would look like with their settings and their G-code. So the first one was this bag clip and it does look pretty good. Looks like all the other models that I printed with their slicer. The sides are extruded properly. The bottom was extruded a little bit more than it should be. The top was a little bit under extruded. But overall, it does function. The bag clip does open and squeeze. So it's definitely a successful model. Also on the SD card, there was this little figurine that printed. It's a pretty complex little model. Again, like the other models that I printed with a slicer, the outer shells do look a little bit rough. The top is under extruded a little bit and the bottom is over extruded a little bit, but it does look pretty good. You can see all the little mesh, the chain mail on this little guy. It looks pretty good actually. Again, the outer shell just needs a little bit more work. So again, this is a pretty good model. Not perfect, not the best I've seen, but it definitely looks like what it's supposed to be. So overall, this printer took me a long time to get printing correctly. There are a lot of small things that it seems like the engineers overlooked while making this or just some cost saving measures, I'm not sure. But the print quality is not the best, but it is definitely fair for all the small things I found that should affect the print quality of this printer. On the bright side, this is my favorite print bed I have tested so far. It's so awesome to just take the bed right off after the print, flex it, the print pops right off and just slap it back on. And the magnetic bell plate just centers itself right in the correct spot. That's super cool. Right now, the printer is well under 200 US dollars. The price fluctuates a lot. So I'll put a link down in the description below where you can check out the current price and where to buy it. So if you are an absolute beginner with 3D printing, I would recommend looking at a different printer than this. But if you like to tinker around and do upgrades and work on your printer, this might be a good little cheap machine to work on. So a big thanks to King Green again for sending this printer out to me for a review. So thanks again for watching guys. If you like this video, let's give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more 3D printing videos like this. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And I will see you all in the next video.